something I did not consider when I purchased this drawing pad is it does not have rings. So for me to use it on this easel, I have to tear it out. <laughs> Which is something I hate to do, but I guess we'll try. I do wish I had a drawing board. This is really the only instance where I wish I had a drawing board and I really miss the horses from art school. So I pulled the sheet out and uh, I'm just gonna use it on top. It really bothers me that I can't leave it in the sketchbook, but we're just gonna have to get over it. Okay. Personally, I like my easel, especially if I'm using wet medium, leaning really far back just so that it doesn't run. And I'm sure there's probably some art teacher somewhere that cringes at this behavior, but... But what do I care? I don't have any art teachers anymore, so I can do whatever I want. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that the amazing thing about art is that you can do whatever you want. I don't have a plan. Hello there. My name is Sophia Metropolis. I'm an artist. I was once a filmmaker. I have now taken my art skills and combined them with my film skills to create this YouTube channel. And like a, like a true businesswoman, I have been paying close attention to my analytics on this YouTube channel. And it was through said analytics that I learned that you guys love the Hemi Mia jelly gouache set. So I figured why not make some more videos about it. And something that I did not notice anybody doing was painting large with the Hemi Mia gouache set. If you are unfamiliar, if you have not heard of it, this is the Hemi Mia gouache set. It has jelly cups in it. They look like this. So my plan is to paint as big of a canvas as I have which is this lovely Strathmore watercolor paper, 18 by 24. I haven't painted this size probably since 2017 when I was a senior in college. And I also have never painted this size in gouache. I've only ever painted this size in acrylic. So we'll see how it goes. My biggest concern is the droopiness, like the dripping part. So I'm gonna try to not work super wet. I tried to lean my easel back as far as possible so that I could try to avoid some dripping. I will be using the brushes that came with this set. In the past, I made a video where I complained about the fact that they are long handled as you can see but for working on an easel that makes total sense and they're pretty dry bristle so I feel like it gives a little bit more of like a painterly stroke you can kind of see the paint more and working at this size I don't want to be really precise I want to kind of be a little bit more brush strokey brush stroke my ego that wasn't a good joke so yeah I have been trying to think all day about what it is I'm actually gonna paint and I I, I don't I still don't really know but it's gonna come to me and um, I'm just gonna start and I'm gonna hit record and we're gonna see what happens uh, maybe some people go into these kinds of things with a plan but I rarely do I, the plan to make the video was the plan so anyway without further ado if you are new here and you have never seen one of my videos or you have seen one of my videos please subscribe I put out new videos every Wednesday and Friday and I'll be putting out more videos under the topic of the Himi gouache set since you guys seem to like it I'm trying to figure out ways I can push my comfort level with this material and see how far we can work it I also make videos about other things but mostly they're art related we have fun in my videos. And by we, I mean me and the hundred people that watch them. Thanks you guys. I see you seeing me, seeing the camera lens. To make the whole experience a Himi gouache experience. Just kidding, I would never touch my lens with this. That would absolutely drive me up a wall. <laughs> okay, this intro is way too long. The other thing is I'm not gonna use the palette that comes with this gouache mostly because it just is too small and I don't like the ridges. I like to use palette knife and the ridges drive me crazy. And a new critique that I have is my palette knife scratches this palette. So that drives me up the wall. So instead, I'm gonna be using this palette that I have not used or washed in several months. It does have gouache on it. I'm pretty sure this is Winsor Newton gouache, not Hemi gouache, but there's very trace amounts. So I think it should be fine. Let's get into it. Okay, let's just get started.
point, it may look unsalvageable, which is how it feels, quite frankly. I hate it with every fiber of my being because once again, I did absolutely no planning before I started. And if my grandfather was here, he would call this rushed, which perhaps it was slightly rushed. My plan of salvage is to go back in with Posca markers and do some really nice detailed line work over this mess that I've created. But my review of using these Hemi gouache on large scale is I actually like it a lot. I think uh, it's not nearly as drippy as I kind of thought it would be. I don't know why I thought it was gonna be really drippy, but I haven't had any drip situations whatsoever, even when I'm using the material pretty wet. So that's cool. I've gone through now all of the stages of art making where I was into it and then I hated it and then I worked on it and I feel like I made it better but I still don't like it. I think that putting the line details on it was definitely the move and the kind of cohesive bits that it needs. I think the only way to do it from this point is to truly overdo it. I'm stopping for now. Tomorrow I'm gonna come back in and add some detail to the cactus and then fill some but not all of the white spaces because I think there's some places where like the plants are kind of connected and then there's other places where they're completely separate. So I'm gonna try and just put a little bit more, a little bit more in there but that will be for tomorrow when I can look at it with fresh eyes and maybe I can like pull something out of it compositionally to make it not look like such a chaotic page, but I feel like the chaos kind of grew on me. At first I was like, why am I making it this chaotic? Why didn't I have a plan? But now I kind of like it. I feel like it's like, I don't know, it's just an explosion of plants and spring. It's weird to work at this size though. I'm like, I feel like I barely just got down the hang of like working a copy paper sized page. So to work at 18 by 24, I'm like, I don't, I don't even know. I haven't looked at something this big in months. Like I ha you know? <laughs> anyway, okay, I'm going to sleep. See you in the morning. So here's how it went down. I went to sleep last night thinking that it was growing on me and that I didn't hate it as much as I thought I did. Woke up this morning, took a hard look at it, actually didn't look at it very hard at all, immediately hated it and realized the giant phallic imagery we've got going on in the middle of it. So I've decided I'm going to resurrect this very simply. I am going to flip it around and work on the back. And that's pretty much what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take one flower and two leaves and I'm gonna create a smaller composition on the back of this page. You may be wondering for what purpose and I don't really have an answer. I just feel like I should have some sort of sense of completion and that it should be um, good enough that I don't hate it and that I don't put it up and be like, wow, I hate that. I have high hopes for our revised painting. And my thought is that that first one was just my warm up page. Do I care that it's immediately on the back of the painting? No, I do not. Do other people? Probably. Does that bother me? Absolutely not. Pages have two sides for a reason. That's how I see it. Anyway, let's get started.
overall, I am really happy with how the second version of this painting came out. I'm really glad I went back and did a second painting. I could have very easily stopped after the first one, but I kind of treated that first one as a warm-up, and I think that was really worth it because it made this piece better. I had a better concept of what I wanted to do, and I had kind of tried out all of my ideas on that first one. I think this is a relatively simple still life, but compositionally I like it a lot better than when I was just kind of like plant vomiting on the page. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed watching me struggle through the Himi gouache, and comment down below if you have any other ideas of what I should do with this gouache. It's actually, it held up really well painting at this size. I'm really impressed. I kind of thought I was going to go through a lot more paint than I did. I probably wouldn't use the brushes again because I did find myself wanting a little bit more of a clean line than the hard bristles of the brushes that comes with the set. But all in all, I'm really satisfied and I definitely want to try it again. And also it's a good kind of experiment for me to start working big again. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Sophia Metropolis and I will see you in the next one.